I've been tinkering with pulse jets for nearly 20 years, and today we're going to build a pulse jet that kicks out an earth shattering 85 pounds of thrust. Let's get to it. Now, this is the Hiller Lockwood valveless pulse jet we're going to build. Okay, uh, yeah, it's just a model, but I think you get the idea. Uh, to put it in perspective, here is a model of me. Okay, maybe I need to be a little taller. There, you get the idea. Something like that. This should give you a rough idea how big this engine actually is. It's about seven foot long, maybe a little bit longer. Typically, you're going to find plans for an engine like this. This is a 55 pound Hiller Lockwood valveless pulse jet engine. This one puts out about 55 pounds of thrust. Well, we just need more teeth rattling power than this. Now this engine is made out of just mild steel and that works well enough. But stainless is really the way to go for longevity. Now these are all the 304 stainless flat blanks to make this engine. Now these flat blanks, once rolled together, will make cones. And once we put all those cones together, we'll have our pulse jet engine. So the first step is to take them from flat and then roll them into a tube or, or conical shape. Now being that these are 304 stainless, 18 gauge, these are pretty heavy duty, they're pretty hard to roll. My regular roller won't do it, so I made a tool that'll help me bend these into shape. Let's get to that. This is the tool that I built to bend these pieces of 304 stainless sheet into a cone. If you want to see how I put this together, there's a link in the description for the build video. So first we'll load our sheet, we'll clamp down the handles, line it up, and just start bending little increments until we get it all the way around. Okay, after a couple of minutes, we've got a tubular-ish shape, close enough. Next, we got to prep these flat spots on the ends. The ends are always a little bit flat. We need to prep those so we can get this gap closed up and everything tacked and welded together. I've got this 2x4 just clamped down to my bench. I'm going to use this as an anvil to kind of shape the tube a bit so we can get it clamped together and everything lines up all right. We've got these edges rolled over a little bit so they'll line up better. So now it's just a matter of squeezing these together and getting them tacked up. I'm going to use these wood clamps. These actually work pretty good. Once you get them to line up, you can take some locking pliers and just clamp on the ends and hold them together. Once I get these locking pliers in place, I'll throw a couple of tacks with a TIG welder on the ends to hold everything together. And then we'll work our way towards the center, making adjustments with a little persuasion. Now when you're welding stainless, you really should back purge the inside of the tube so that you don't oxidize the inside of that weld seam. You have a crusty inferior weld seam. I don't have a setup to purge tubes. I don't have an extra regulator or tank or any of that. So what I use is this stuff. This is flux for coating the inside and the seam of the weld. What you want is the Solar Flux, the Type B. It comes in a can. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get some. I've had this can for probably seven or eight years and I've got a lifetime supply still in there. To mix up this flux you just need a little container. I like using a little paintbrush and some isopropyl alcohol. We'll just take a little bit. There's already some in here. We'll just take a little bit, add some more to the jar, add a little bit of alcohol and just mix it up real good. You just get kind of a paste going on in there. Once it's mixed up you can just kind of paint it on on your seam, the inside of that seam. It's been a few minutes and our flux is dry, so now I can go ahead and we'll just weld up the whole seam and, and this piece will be done. Okay, that's welded up. It turned out pretty good. It's still a little bit egg shaped, so we're going to use the 2x4 anvil to straighten that out a bit and then this one will be good.
pretty good. You can see that weld on the inside has been glazed over by that flux, so it's it's kept the oxygen away so it doesn't oxidize and get all gnarly. And now we just have to do that like nine more times. After a few hours we got all our tubes welded together and straightened out pretty good. Now it's just a matter of putting all these pieces together and then we'll be pretty close to having our pulse jet. It finally looks like something. This thing is pretty big. It barely fits on my table here. So now we need to work on the ignition. I just use a regular spark plug. I've got this spark plug bung here made out of stainless steel and I, I cut it down so that when the spark plugs in all the way it protrudes just just a little bit. So we'll get a hole cut right in the bottom right here and get that welded in. Never mind. I changed my mind. It's going on this end right here. Initially I'm going to start this engine on propane, so I've got to finish the propane injector. That's just a stainless steel bar, we're going to drill some holes in there, but I need to figure out where we're going to put it. So what I've come up with is some MPT fittings to actually make this exchangeable so I want to make changes down the road. And I've got one that I've contoured to this cone, so I need to put that there, drill a hole, I'll mark it out, drill the hole, get it welded up, and then we can finish the injector and get that aligned just the way we want it.
Well, a few drill bits later and some frustration and I was able to get all these holes drilled in the injector. They're opposing and when they go into the engine, they'll be spraying perpendicular to the airflow. So now all we've got left is to mount it to something and test fire it. So this is my ignition module that get, provides spark to the engine. This only needs to be on just when the engine started. If you're interested in how to build one of these, it's just made out of some automotive parts. I have a link in my description of the video where uh, I have got a complete build video so you can make your own. I strapped the engine down to this big block of wood I had uh, with some simple straps. This is just a test fire, so I'm not gonna fire it too long. I've got the ignition set up and the fuel set up to the liquid propane tank. So let's see if she'll fire right up. Okay, let's wake up the neighborhood. Right, she fired right up man that it just it, it never gets old that does uh so she looks like she's kind of starving for fuel so we need to get her set up running on diesel or gasoline that's a whole different uh a whole different thing all right i made some adjustments to the uh, fuel system let's see if we can get some more power out of her That second run that, that had quite a bit more power that seemed like it was getting up to almost full power there that was really blasting if you have any good ideas as to what i should attach this to let me know in the comments and as always thanks for stopping by and i hope i've inspired you to get out and build something